over a quarter of a million pounds or $350,000 worth of sales. Yeah, that's, that's a real number. That's what I've done since January. And it's hard. Let me tell you, it is hard work. So today, let's do a deep dive into what it's like to actually sell silver and gold in volume and whether or not you could hack it if you needed to do it. Because it is not as easy as you think. Everybody, Backyard Bullion here and a warm welcome to you all joining me for another Precious Metal Ramble. So, as you heard in the intro, it's been a busy weekend selling £28,000 worth, $33,000 worth of gold, silver and platinum, all on behalf of other people, I should very quickly add. It's been amazing, it's been incredible. And I want to share some insights today on what that process has been like to imagine if you were in that position yourself, what you might have to go through to actually sell some of this stuff. It's hard work, there's a lot to consider. I'll share some of the insights that I have as an individual selling items out to the general public. And also just talk a little bit about what types of gold, silver and platinum are actually quick sellers, good sellers. The difference between like bars and coins is stark and gold coins and gold bars as well. Lots of insights to share, so it's going to be a little bit of a tangential ramble, which is what I'm best known for. So strap in, and if you are enjoying it as we go, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button, or indeed subscribe if you're not subscribed. So, for those that don't know, what I mean by I sold on other people's behalf is I run a little side hustle business, which is if you are interested in selling some precious metals and you don't want to get hosed by a dealer getting less than spot for something like a gold bar like this, then we can sell it to somebody out there and we can undercut the price that they might pay if they bought the same thing from a dealer. Everybody wins. We get better prices for buyers, better prices for sellers. Uh, I suppose the dealers are the only ones that don't win, actually, quite honestly. And I would not be surprised if there are some dealers out there that maybe are starting to feel some of the impact that we are having in the Backyard Bullion Buyers Club as collectively since the beginning of... January, that's when I started recording in depth on this. I did it a few bits before in 2022. But just since January, we've sold £288,000 worth. That's $320,000 worth of gold and silver. That's all gold and silver that could potentially have just ended up in a dealer's pocket and then resold by them. I think that's really, really interesting, really good. So some of the insights to share with you about actually doing this and selling this, because I've talked a lot on my channel in the past about actually selling your gold and silver. You might not ever want to, and that's absolutely fine. You might just be, let's just hold it and see what happens at the end of the day. If there's a gigantic financial collapse, you're fine. Great, good for you. But there are a lot of people out there who buy this stuff ultimately to make money on it, or at least to use it as a savings vehicle until they need to get the cash out of that savings vehicle. And selling it is okay if you just want to go to a dealer and get hosed, literally hosed, that's what they will do. They will give you spot price or potentially less depending on where you go. There are some dealers that might pay a little bit more for things like these eagles. By the way, these are my eagles, my personal eagles, so I'm fine just to ding and dent them and make them ping. I love these, they're great, and they're just bullying to me. So don't get angry. Um, so yes, the, the whole point is if you want to sell, it's hard work, and it really is hard work. So just to give a little example, uh, well, I, I don't know how to do it really. Let's go through the whole life cycle. So choosing what to sell, I guess, is an interesting thing. Um, you know, you've got to choose what to buy before you can even look to sell. From my experience in this last five months, I'd say that bars will sell, but they're not necessarily as popular in terms of price points. So you won't get as much for your silver bars as you will for your silver coins. And what I mean by that is a bar right now, kilo bar, unless it's something that's fancy, something that's different, that's got a good design or a collectible, then you're probably looking at like 22, 23 an ounce for it. Max, absolute max. Any more than that, and I think people will just probably not bother. Um, coins though, you know, Britannia's right now, 27 an ounce, absolutely all day long people will buy those for. And I genuinely think that that, so 27 an ounce is a really good price for these right now, in my opinion, because, um, they sell for that and more. 
really easily, and the dealers are selling them for 32, 33, 34 pounds an ounce. You have gotta look in the UK at Eagles from dealers, they're, they're charging 45 pounds an ounce for these. So to sell these out at 30 pounds an ounce, um, or thereabouts is in my opinion, a pretty good price to pay if you at the other end are selling in the right way. If you're taking these to a dealer, they're gonna give you nothing for them. Well, nothing in terms of that premium. Um, so from my perspective, I think I would probably err on the side of coins over the bars. However, there is an issue with coins, and that comes down to condition and what's everyone's favorite topic, milk spotting of these coins. Um, now we had in the batch this weekend, unfortunately I have already packaged up all of the really horrible examples. There were a bunch of maples which had some absolutely horrible milk spotting. It was absolutely disastrous. And I just said to the seller, look, we're gonna have to drop the prices down on those. Ah, oh, look, I've picked one with a little bit of uh, milk spotting as well here. Uh, you know, and things like this as well. So this is a one and a half ounce polar bear. They're really nice coins. They're really attractive looking. And some of them in this batch were okay in terms of condition, like could be, could be you could get away with them looking pretty good. Um, but I just said, you got another one here with a bit of toning on it. You know, in good condition, you don't get these very often here in the UK. I'd have quite happily marketed these out at around the same price as the Britannia's, 26, 27 pounds an ounce. But I just had to say to the seller, look, you know, the condition of these whilst is okay, they're basically just half decent bullion coins, those ones, gonna be 25 an ounce. For the really bad milky, milky maples, 24 an ounce is the best they're gonna get. And of course, my selling service charges one pound an ounce. So the seller only gets 23 pounds an ounce for them. So. Coins is like this double-edged sword. If you are lucky and you get a really good batch of Britannias out from the Royal Mint, no milk spots on them at all. Um, like these ones are mine, my own personal ones, so I'm not gonna be uh, sort of dinging and shout or bouncing them around as much as I do the, uh, the Eagles here. But if you get a good batch, they'll hold their price point. They'll hold that premium really easily and really well. But if they do start to develop like bad milk, toning, issues like that, it knocks that premium off and people will not, they, given a choice, would you buy a nice Britannia or a bad one? Of course you'd buy a nice one, wouldn't you? So bars, you're kind of safer in that sense. You get, you know, you get your price, buy it 22, 23 pounds an ounce, sell it 22, 23 pounds an ounce. You can't really go much wrong with it. It just tracks spot price up and down. Coins have a little bit of wiggle room. Now, in terms of gold versus silver, that's another thing to just very briefly talk on. Silver's very liquid right now, that sells super quick. Gold is pretty popular, but it has to be at the right price. Bars like these are just gonna have to be at really cheap prices as well. Some of the fractional ones will get a bit of a premium over spot, but a big one like this, we sold this for 1%. Uh, it was that 1.5% over spot, something like that. That's a really great price for an ounce of gold right now. Um, so, you know, from my, from my perspective, I would say silver is probably an easier bet, but it's got a lot of work to it. And that's where we come on to sort of the second part of the video here, where we talk through some of the labors and trials and tribulations that I have to go through as a seller. Um, so selling coins and selling anything online is not easy. A lot of people think, ah, oh, it's easy, I'll just do it, I'll just do it when I, when I need to do it, it'll be fine, I'll sell everything I need to sell, it'll be great. Um, it's actually really not as easy as people think. Um, first of all, if you're just a nobody and you set up your own website or you're selling on social media, then how are you gonna get your customers? Now I'm lucky in that I have got that um, social media profile, that basis already. We've got the newsletter that people have been signing up to. So I've got this captivated audience that is willing to put money where their mouth is. Um, but then it doesn't get easier from there. So, you know, I listed all of this on Friday afternoon. People started buying before I'd even managed to get the email. Um, newsletter together. I was, of course, want to have everything listed before I send an email out, otherwise people are clicking through to an empty website. And then um, the orders start coming in. Now, the way that we have to do this here, and, and for US, US viewers, this is the reason why we can't offer this out to US customers, is because if you pay by a credit card, debit card, PayPal with, uh, you know, the goods and services, it opens the sellers up to a very risky scenario where you might get fraudulent buyers buying and saying, I never received it or I received fake stuff. Now we test every single piece and we then list it as genuine and we then just basically pass on the bank details as an intermediary. So you pay the seller directly with a bank's transfer and that's not very possible or easy to do for the Americans to the British. Um, I've tried time and time again to explain a simple bank's transfer to an American and they have no clue what it's all about. That's fine. So we can't really do it to the US. And then there's international shipping as well. And the fact that you guys can get silver for cheaper. So 
We list things, we sell things, I have to then send all of the information out to all of the buyers, and when it was a big batch of gold and silver like it was over this weekend, we had 65 individual people order. 65 people, and that doesn't sound like a large number, but trust me, that is a large number over a space of about three hours where people are ordering all of the bullion, and I have to manage all of that. And that's absolutely fine, I'm not shirking away from the fact that I'm doing that work, but just imagine doing all that work if it was you. So if you were just sat there trying to liaise with 65 different individual people, all with their own little agendas and needs and wants and trying to get everything sorted in terms of who's paid who, where they paid. I've had, I had a customer this weekend who paid me for... Oh, is this one a bit uh, milky? I think it is. We um, had one customer paid me for the coins. Oh, no, maybe it's just a bit of haze. Uh, instead of the seller. So I had to refund him and then I had to repay back. I had an absolute troll of a customer today who um, just emailed me first thing this morning saying, uh, you know, no, no longer need this order, so I'm cancelling. Great, thanks. Thanks for wasting everybody's time. You know, I've had to manage that kind of situation, which is just fantastic as a seller. Relist the coins and get them sent out uh, to new people which they sold very quickly. So it's quite frankly, the buyer's loss. Um, you know, and I don't shy away from the fact that that's a really annoying situation. So I quite honestly just went back to the, uh, went back to this buyer who messed me around and said, well, you're not welcome to buy anymore, sorry. And that's a fairly legitimate course of action that dealers can take as well. If you read on a lot of the big dealers' websites about distance selling regulations, and if this gentleman is watching, I don't, don't think he'll probably watch my channel ever again, but if he does, have a read of the distance selling regulations for items which are priced based on fluctuations of market prices, because you don't have as many rights as you think. Also, you don't have the right to cancel, and I was well within my rights to tell you no, and even pursue you for a termination fee. But I chose not to, just chose to tell you, well, yeah, not ordering from me again. So, you know, there are all of these things to do. And then I've got to package everything up. And that takes time. And I'm going to be doing packaging probably for the better part of 24 hours over the course of this long weekend. Which is, again, fine because I enjoy doing this. It's part of my job. And I'm being compensated for it from the sellers in terms of that um, payment in, for the service. Which is absolutely fine. But can you imagine sitting there organising all the postage labels, the boxes, the stuffing that needs to go in the boxes, getting the right coins in the right boxes, doing the double checks on the orders, printing out all the invoices, making sure that everybody's got the exact types of things they want with the right postage, with the right addresses on. It's it's great fun, honestly. It, I, I love it personally. Um, it's But it's time laborious. It's not for everybody. And if you wanted to do it, then great and good for you. And if you can do it, great and good for you. But... Not a lot of people can, and not a, not a lot of people will understand how important it is to get a lot of that right. Make some mistakes, piss off some customers, and you're in trouble. You could be in a lot of issues in terms of reputational-based um, issues. So, yeah, really, and that, meanwhile, of course, with all of this, you've got to manage your sellers and make sure they're all happy with the prices they're getting paid and the money's getting into their accounts and everything. So lots of difficulties in this. It is interesting. Uh, to say the least. So thought well, that would be uh, an interesting one for some of my ramblers who like to listen to the end of a video um, to see what I go through for this, this kind of thing. And I know some of you out there will be like, oh, why don't you just hire someone to do all this for you? Why don't you hire someone to help you? Um, I don't need to. I'm perfectly capable of doing all this work myself. I enjoy doing this work all myself. And I think I'm being fairly compensated for doing this work. Um, there's also the argument of, well, you don't really want to hire someone from outside your inner circle, i.e. outside of Mrs. Backyard Bullion, um, to help with all of this because, you know, it's precious metal stuff. Who do you trust? How do you find someone like that to do that job? And I know there's going to be as well some of you here in the UK that will be like, I would volunteer to do it. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't charge money for it. i just do it. It's fun. And I know you would, but it's not that easy. It's really not that easy. So um, the point of this video, in conclusion, if you are watching all the way through, is to have a good long hard think about your own situation. If you are looking to sell, the types of things you're buying in the first place would be interesting, but also the practicalities of selling. Now, this is just a gigantic order all in one go over one weekend, very big, very stressful. But have a think about how you might do that because it's not as easy as you think and it's certainly gonna be proving to be difficult. And that kind of brings me to the last little advertisement of my service. If you want to look to sell something and you don't want to have to do all of the hard work that I've described here, 
instead all you would do is send me the coins and check the money's in your account, then let's get in touch with me, or get in touch with me, I should say. Let's get in touch together. Um, if you want to buy from our service, then there's information down in the description box below. Just email me, it's very simple, and I'll add you to the newsletter. So that's basically it for me today. £288,000 worth of sales. I wonder if there's a few dealers out there that are hurting a little bit, whether they've noticed a reduction in their bottom line of secondhand goods coming in. I bet there are. and in fact, Well, in fact, I know there are because a fair few of the sellers that I've been working with have told me about the atrocious prices that they were getting for their silver and gold coins from other dealers out there. And not the big guys. Some of the big guys will pay decent money, but some of the smaller fish, the individuals that think they're God's gift to the world of bullion, they're just there to fleece and hose and make as much money as possible. And let me tell you, there's some sharks out there offering 90% of spot for gold, 90% of spot for silver, and they're taking advantage of people, which I don't like. So... This is why my service, I think, is really good. Anyway, look, that's that's a, what are we, 16-minute tangential ramble from Backyard Bullion. Thank you. Thank you to my ramblers for watching to the end, if you have. We'll see you on the next video. Otherwise, that is it from me. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you on the next one. As always, please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.